All right, today's video is going to look very different from my typical videos as you probably already noticed, but this is a topic that is super important and personal to me. My wife and I are currently on a much needed vacation visiting a few countries here in Europe, and as is the case anytime I step away from the day-to-day -day hamster wheel of life, I've been spending some time thinking about the past few years of my life in which so much has changed, especially financially. In the past year and a half alone, financially speaking, I've experienced both the lowest and most anxious point of my life and the highest, most joyous points. And there are some very intentional things that my wife and I did between those mountains and valleys that I think can help a lot of you take control of your financial life. Also, huge thank you to Chime for sponsoring today's video and allowing me to try out this different style video, but more on that later. Okay, as some of you may know, back in May of 2022, my wife and I bought our first house, which has been such an incredible blessing, but it didn't start off that way. We'd been saving for the down payment and all of that good stuff, but we were also planning our wedding and had made a very impulsive decision to leave our jobs and travel in Europe for three months following our wedding. And the plan was to not buy a house until we got home from our honeymoon. That was until the perfect house popped up just weeks before we were supposed to get married and leave for several months. And I called my wife on a Thursday and said, hey, we should buy this house. And our offer was accepted on a Sunday. So needless to say, the entire process happened very quickly, especially for first time home buyers. Okay, Brendan, why are you telling me this incredibly boring story about buying your first home? Well, the week that followed us buying our house was the most anxious and worrisome week of my entire life and it took me months to get back to a good headspace financially. 95% of the time, I'm a very chill person, and I'm a firm believer that worrying will change absolutely nothing. But that particular week I just mentioned was the other 5%. I spiraled into running every possible scenario in my head, and what if this happens, and crunching the numbers, and very quickly, what was an amazing blessing became my worst nightmare. I'll spare you the boring details because I think that's enough story time for one video, but it took me a good eight months to feel any sense of peace in my own home and here we are just a year and a half later and we are better off financially than we have ever been and I'm feeling more financial peace at this point in my life than any time before and that did not happen by accident. So if you frequently feel or have felt those same anxious emotions about money, here's exactly what I did to take back control of my financial life. First of all, and I know this is gonna be a huge snooze right out of the gates, but you've got to create a budget. I understand that budgeting isn't the most luxurious thing in the world, and it can feel like a total drag if you're not doing it the right way, especially if you've never created a budget yourself before. I've personally tried pretty much every budgeting method and app under the sun, and I talked about that topic before, so we won't get into it in this video. But at the very least, you need to understand how much money is coming in and how much money is going out. And trust me, if you're experiencing financial anxiety yourself that I described earlier, then just creating your first budget is probably going to give you an immense sense of peace because at least if things are a complete mess, you'll know why they are a complete mess and how you can start fixing them. This is also gonna allow you to spend and treat yourself guilt-free, which I think is really important. So if you feel like you work incredibly hard every single month, yet you have nothing to show for it, then at least try making a budget for a few months. And if you absolutely hate it, then you can always go back to your unbudgeted lifestyle. Another thing that helps me as a numbers person who thinks I can fix the situation if I just run the numbers one more time is automating everything. Study after study has shown that those who automate their finances are statistically more likely to succeed and feel less financial anxiety because they're not in there constantly looking at the numbers and running all of the scenarios like I talked about earlier. Now, automating your finances can take a lot of different forms, but what I'm talking about here is automating the flow of your money so that you can just make the right financial decision once and then move on with your life. I've set things up to automatically send me my business owner distributions into my personal bank account each month. It then automatically gets split up across all of the different areas that I wanna save for, automatically takes a portion of that and sends it to my automated investing portfolio and automatically pays all of my monthly bills. Like literally, if I went kaput today, as long as my passive income from my business continued to come into my business account, my finances would run automatically without me. Make smart financial decisions once, set up those decisions to happen automatically and move on with your life. 
Hello from my hotel room here in London, where I wanna quickly talk about one of the most important tools that has helped me take control of my finances and automate things across the board. And they also happen to be today's video sponsor, Chime. You may have noticed my not so subtle placement of my Chime Visa debit card throughout this video, which I can use while I'm traveling since it charges me no foreign transaction fees. But Chime also gives me all of the features I want from a checking account and optional savings account without any of the fluff that I don't. I can get paid up to two days early with direct deposit, can pay anyone with no fees even if they aren't a Chime user themselves, and I can access over 60,000 in-network fee-free ATMs and even deposit cash at over 8,500 retail locations. Plus, my savings account gets 2% annual percentage yield, which lets my money work for me even while I'm traveling. If you've been around my channel for a while, then you know that I've been talking about Chime for years at this point, and despite having used hundreds of other financial tools over the years, I've been a loyal Chime user for three years at this point, and I always seem to come back to its simplicity and ease of use. The platform is so easy to learn, and I've watched my wife and other family members pick it up in a matter of minutes, and it has allowed me to track my financial health on the go right from my smartphone without needing to jump between multiple confusing and cluttered apps. So if you want to join the millions of Chime users, myself included, then I'll leave a link for that down below the like button. Huge thank you to Chime for sponsoring this video and continuing to be awesome. All right, the third thing my wife and I did to crawl out of that pit of financial worry is dreaming together. I know that sounds kind of weird at first, but whether you're with a spouse or living that single financial life, dreaming about the life that you want to build and the financial success that that will require is not only a lot of fun, but is the first step in turning that dream into a realistic goal. When we first bought our house, we got a 15 year fixed rate mortgage. Then after a few months of getting our financial footing under us, we thought, what if we paid it off in 10 years? Then we continued to work hard and put our heads down for a few more months. And then the next time that we reran the numbers, we thought, what if we could pay it off in five years? And now we're at the point where we are on track to pay off our home just three years after buying it, which I realize probably sounds crazy to you, but what was a crazy dream for us is now a very realistic goal. Now, in a similar vein, the fourth thing we did was celebrate the small wins. Whether you're trying to pay off debt, save for a house, or take your family on an incredible vacation, sometimes financial burdens can feel insurmountable, and trust me, I know how that feels. So by celebrating the small wins, you'll psychologically gain momentum, feel remotivated to keep going, and it can make the entire process of tackling those large financial burdens a lot more fun. That's exactly why the debt avalanche, where you pay off the highest interest debts first, is mathematically the correct way to pay off debt. Psychologically, by using something like the debt snowball, where you pay off the smallest debt first, regardless of the interest rate, can actually be more effective in the long term because it helps you build that momentum and celebrate the small wins. Not meant to be a pitch for one debt payoff method over another, but I think you get the point. Celebrate the small wins and you will enjoy the journey a lot more. Welcome to our hotel room here in Prague. And my last tip for you that is also a bit cookie cutter, but is just a fact of life that we all need to hear. Sometimes you just have to put your head down and work. Now, I'm not sure if it's obvious by my marshmallow physique, but I'm not some alpha male on the internet telling you that you've got to pull yourself up by the bootstraps because I don't think that a lot of people respond well to that. But what I can tell you from experience is you can think about changing your financial situation or worry about money and run all of the scenarios in your head and crunch the numbers for the hundredth time. And none of those things will actually move you closer to actually taking back control of your financial life. That's not to say that that planning and having a goal isn't important because if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. But once you've identified your goal and come up with a realistic plan, then at some point you've just got to put your head down, do the thing and stick to the plan. When my wife and I were feeling that immense burden of our new mortgage weighing on us day after day, we established a plan which included all of the things that we just talked about and agreed that this may be an uncomfortable season of life and that's okay. We're certainly not afraid of hard work and by simply getting on the same page and going after this thing together, we've completely turned around our financial situation and the sacrifices we are making now will continue to pay dividends during the next season of life 
whatever that may be. All right, I think that is enough deep thoughts with Brendan for one video. I'm gonna go enjoy my time here in Germany, but let me know what you thought of this different style video. And again, if you wanna learn more about Chime and how they can help you take control of your financial life, then I'll leave a link for that down in the description. As always, take it easy, and I'll see you in the next one.